we need way more women in Web3, obviously. I think that like we just, I, I think that like at first it was more like we, we don't have any filter or system to the build guild at all. It's basically just like who, whoever starts building gets a stream and we don't even know anything about you. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to New Forum, the Web3 podcast bringing together developers, creators, and investors in the Web3 and crypto space. And on today's episode, I have a special guest for you guys because Austin Griffin is joining me. He's been on many episodes of Bankless, and we're going to talk today about what he's building with Speedrun Ethereum and how you can get plugged in to the Ethereum community. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I'm I'm definitely just like sponsored by the EF. I definitely don't re represent the EF. The EF is is a bigger, higher level, smarter, smarter group. I, I am like thinking about developer onboarding, developer tooling and developer education. So my focus is on what happens when uh, a technically sound person wants to get into Ethereum and how do I prepare them for that? And I, after going through it myself and after mentoring a lot of people that went through it, we, we were able to really kind of isolate, you know, you need, you need this kind of set of, of information. And so we created a curriculum around a tool and then an incentivization layer around all of that. But it all starts at Speedrun Ethereum. And that's where you can go to kind of uh, get your bearings and learn kind of the, you kind of get the Ethereum mind dump, basically. <laughs> Exciting. And could you walk me through like the onboarding process and also, yeah, what are the most recent and exciting things that are built right now? Yeah. So I think that like the thing that I'm most excited about for 2023 is a new version of Scaffold ETH that uh, is just a modern tech stack. It uses Rainbow Kit, Wagme, Next.js, TypeScript. We have this cool like smart contract hot reloading system where you can make a small edit to your contract and you can see it show up live in your app. And then it deploys to Vercel and a lot of the nice, more modern stuff that we get from Next.js. So uh, mostly just excited for that tooling and excited for uh, kind of what comes out of that. When you when you create a starter kit that makes it really easy to build, then you get like a Cambrian explosion of all these things that come out of it. And we saw that with Scaffold ETH 1, but I think that with Scaffold ETH 2, it just has a more modern stack and will appeal to more modern uh, uh, meticulous developers. So I'm excited to see not 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 exactly what we're building, but what folks will build with what we've built. You know, I think that's always the most exciting part, like people building on top of the project. And I want to know, like, how is the decision making and governance being handled? So yeah, government governance within the build guild is that kind of the question? Yeah, yeah. So the build guild is technically a DAO LLC. We do have a voting structure where we vote. And then there's, you know, about a hundred smart contracts below that, that stream to different developers. Uh, but it's a, it's basically just a multi-sig and we haven't had very many contentious votes. So it's like, you, you almost have to have like a lot of contentious sides to really truly call it a DAO. But right now we're, we all kind of get along and we're all voting with our transactions, but it's basically like, here's all the developers that are, you know, committing great stuff to to the build guild here's the list of them you know sign off on a transaction if you would like to put more money into their stream and and we basically almost always vote and agree so we haven't had a ton of disagreements about that but it's it's a really neat process where that money goes is into a smart contract where then the the stream goes to a specific developer but it's a bunch of developers that we have but anything they want to turn in they can uh, turn into their stream and withdraw. And it's kind of like developer UBI, where we have uh, uh, you know, noticed a bunch of good developers and we're trying to stream them ETH to keep building cool things, public goods, educational content, prototypes, stuff like that for the ecosystem. Amazing. So you're kind of like a well-played team. And I'm wondering, how is it for people outside of like, Europe and America and women like onboarding themselves into the community. I would love to know a bit more about that. 
Uh, it's definitely not a good ratio. We need way more women in Web3, obviously. I think that like we just, I, I think that like at first it was more like we, we don't have any filter or system to the build guild at all. It's basically just like who, whoever starts building gets a stream. And we don't even know anything about you. We don't collect emails. We don't collect any information. You, you use your Web3 wallet to sign in and participate in speedrun Ethereum. And then eventually you use that same wallet to withdraw funds. And we don't really know who you are beyond. Sometimes we have to do KYC, which makes sure we're, we're not sending money to, to a country we're not allowed to. Uh, but in terms of like man or woman, we have no idea. And I think that actually at first I was like, yeah, that'll be good. That, that will bring in, but it's not, you, you have to make like a, a better effort to actually find more women in web three. And we need to do a better job all the way from, from the bottom of the stack to the top to the, uh, the stack in terms of what's attractive sort of like when, when I'm talking about bringing in a developer, if I use a marketing technique, that's going to bring in a bunch of nerds it's going to be like 90% men most of the time, right? So I have to, I have to think about how, how I make my own DAO more welcoming to women and how we make the whole ecosystem more welcoming to women. It, it's tricky because I, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know exactly how to do this, but I, I, can, I can see that we're not doing a good enough job, but, and I can try a bunch of things, but I haven't found the answer to this yet. But I know that we need to do a much better job. Yeah, I think it starts way earlier with like educating women and, you know, also um, kind of bringing the barriers down and like you mentioned, the marketing and everything. And New Firm is also trying to do that and bridge the gap kind of and bring more um, people from outside of crypto into the space. I'm wondering, you talked a bit about uh, data and identity and I'm wondering how is your view personally on these topics, um, identity on and off chain and uh, yeah, I would love to know more about that. That's, I mean, that's definitely something in the space. We see that like we have lots of anon identities and we have a, you know, a handful of people that are doxxed and like, I'm very obviously doxxed. Like you can probably find me pretty easily if you wanted. I think that like the, the interesting thing here is when we zoom in on civil resistance, if you look at any good platform that's built on, uh, something like Ethereum that is very agnostic to identity, uh, you end up building these systems where if you can Sybil attack the system, you can usually, you know, break the protocol. And so, so civil resistance becomes super important and therefore identity becomes super important, but then we don't want to put all that stuff on chain. So there's this kind of like, how do we have, you know, like zero knowledge attestations to the information or off chain attestations to the information about someone where we can prove that this is a human and, you know, the, the votes that are happening that we're collecting here are all like individual humans. They're not one human making all the votes. Right. So I think that identity is huge in civil resistance stuff. And I think that, yes, you're, you're right. We have to be very careful about what we put on chain, but I also think that we have a lot of zero knowledge tech that's coming out that I think is going to help us keep that privacy, uh, and, and still be able to rely on a settlement layer like Ethereum. Yeah. It's kind of like a recent, uh, really hot topic with our guest has been, you know, identity on chain, off chain and how are you going to manage that? And I'm wondering what is the most valuable thing from, you know, you just been at East Denver, had a great time. And why do you think it's so important to have like the um, offline events? And yeah, we'd love to know more about your experiences with them. And yeah, how was East Denver? Yeah, I think, I mean, the energy is great. It's awesome. Everybody comes together. I think that like I could work down here in my basement most days and be happy with it. Uh, but I think what what was so special for me about ETH Denver was bringing the build guild together. Like I said, we let it, um, there's no there's no gating to get into the build guild. Basically, if you want to join the build guild, you speed run Ethereum and you start building things. And if you're building things and learning, you sort of get into this group that of other people that are building things and learning things. And it actually works as a really nice kind of like uh, like mimetic filter leading you to you know, you only end up in this group of people who are building and learning if you're building and learning. And that group doesn't have any other filter other than that. So it's a lot of weird people from all over the world. And 
you know, we build that community up and then something like ETH Denver happens where, you know, I think there were maybe 12 or 15 people from the Build Guild that all flew in from all over the world. You know, there were only like three or four Americans in that group. Uh, we had people from Turkey. We had people from Spain. Like, uh, like, like for us, we had a bunch of us from all over the uh, South America. I don't know if we had any Asian countries. I feel like we need, we need more Asian countries in, in coming to, to ETH Denver. But for me, I got to see people that I only talked to online for the first time. And we're almost like a little family already because we built up such a good uh, reputation together. So for me, it was getting to meet the Build Guild in person and hang out with them and go on a hike and stuff like that. Uh, but overall, I think uh, you, you get to see some of your heroes also, right? Like random people walk by at East Denver and you're like, oh, that's so-and-so. I know, I know so-and-so. So that's that's like there's there's the 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 famousness and then there's the getting together. I think I think the last piece might be the hackathon, right? The staying up late for a few nights in a row to to push a prototype out that you've been thinking about for a while and just like force yourself to do it. It's not healthy at all. You should not do that very often. But we all come together and try it out. You know, once every every uh, maybe a few times a year. And so there's there's that too. So the, the the local community coming together, a worldwide community coming together locally, and also like forcing ourselves to ship something. And I like that you you go to these conferences, but you also take something away, right? You're not just like doing nothing, but you're also there in person to kind of work together. So I think that's really valuable and definitely is something that I always look forward to. Even though America is really far, we can't always travel there all the time about uh, east berlin that's east a good one too berlin. that's the yeah. um so yeah i'm um, just awesome to to finish up the episode i want to know like what are some of the things that you are excited about and you're working on and also maybe a little bit like uh, within the build guilds that is upcoming or that you're really excited about i think okay so from the very high level like on ethereum we have like L2s and it's getting more and more accessible and it's faster and cheaper to make transactions. We're seeing things like account abstraction and it's getting easier and easier to custody your own funds without accidentally lo losing a private key and losing everything, right? Uh, so so in, with those combinations and then uh, we see uh, then kind of a couple layers down now, we see tooling is really blooming. Uh, we we have guys like the Wagme the Wagme crew who are creating new tools and and Rainbow Kit and Wallet Connect Kit and and an amount of wallets I can't even count right there there's so many cool tools coming out and and cool wallets and neat experiences being built on top of this and then for the Build Guild in particular uh, we're we're excited about some small tools we're. We're working on a multi-sig, we're working on a burner wallet, we're working on a mobile wallet. We have all of those apps and they're almost like just counterfactual to the space. Hopefully someone in the space will create a better version, but we have some forkable versions in case like we need to help the ecosystem out really. Uh, but Scaffold E2, I think is, is our main uh, next piece where we hope that we are going to create like the, the, the state of the art tech stack for like I said earlier, like a Cambrian explosion of just different apps to come out of this. We we built it so you can sit down and quickly, you know, very rapidly prototype an app while you're working on your smart contract. So after a 30 minute session of a little bit of solidity, a little bit, bit of React, you almost have an app ready to go. At ETH Denver, I did a live demo and in 30 minutes down in a basement with very little Wi-Fi, I was able to build out an app that had uh, some delegate on it. And like, it was just a smart contract that did a couple things. And then I added a delegate to it. And then I built the UI around selecting your delegate. And then I deployed that to Gorley and then deployed that to Vercel. And anyone in the crowd could actually get in and go interface with that app I built. And I think that, and also that's a, like a really, really clean tech stack. So I think that tool, we're gonna really push hard and hopefully see Lots of other developers using that to build their their next decentralized app. Love it. And I love the energy you brought on today. And I think just your excitement is just so infectious. And yeah, like it takes me back to the, when everything started kind of from my journey and everyone was kind of that spirit. So now uh, that we're in the beer market, it's kind of like more on a low, but we're going to see that rise up again soon. And 
Yes. Wait. If I can get it to zoom. Yes. Yeah. Speed router theory. Yes. Yeah. Where could you guide us quickly? Where do we have to um, go if some of our developers uh, want to check out and just uh, engage with the community? Would love to know. It's basically speedrunethereum.com. That's where if, if you are a decent developer, you should be able to go to speedrunethereum.com and get the download of Ethereum over just a couple of days of just sitting around and tinkering and learning. Amazing. Is there like a Discord as well, or um... we have a Telegram? But basically, like as you complete each challenge, it, it unlocks a new Telegram group for you. Gotcha. Okay, so we link everything as well as Austin's Twitter in the bio. Thank you so much, Austin. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this year and to what you guys are building. And um, yeah, good luck with that. And I see you guys all in the next episode of New Farm. Yeah. Thank you, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs>